Your Majesty, sir. We wish to welcome you and Queen Camilla with both hands to Kenya. Will you solemnly promise and swear... We take this early opportunity to congratulate you on your recent coronation as the King of the United Kingdom and 14 other realms. Needless to say, you are no stranger to Kenya. You have visited this country several times in the past. You are a witness and beneficiary of Kenyan generosity. Kenyans considers you a friend who should not be blamed for the atrocities of the British Empire. In one of your visits, you represented the Queen at the funeral of Kenya's founding father, Mizi Jomo Kenyatta, whom your own people once jailed for nine years for being the leader of Mau Mau. Your visits cement the special relationship that Kenya enjoys with the United Kingdom, including trade that totals more than 1.1 billion pounds a year. As you know, Kenya is a former British colony. This is where royalty and nobles, the British aristocrats, preferred to settle. Kenya's climate, fertile land, and hardworking people provided a haven away from colonies such as Zimbabwe and Australia, where your ancestors sent their riffraff, criminals, lowlifes, and ex-convicts. Your Majesty, sir, as you know, most of the aristocrats and the senior British military officers who came here did not behave in any noble way. They wallowed in decadence of unhappy valley proportions, immortalized in films such as White Mischief. From the perspective of the African, there was no difference between the aristocrats and the riffraff. The settler aristocrats, people with great-sounding hereditary titles of Lord, Duke, Marquis, Earl, Count, Viscount, and Baron, behaved despicably towards the Africans that they found here in Kenya. The British sent punitive expeditions led by mercenaries to quell African resistance, took the best lands from the Africans, confiscated their livestock, changed their culture, destabilized communities, introduced a new religion, taxed their huts and the breasts of their women, and gave them a dose of education by the teaspoonful. When the locals resisted, the British colonialists murdered them. You may have heard of the likes of Waiyaki Wahinga, who was buried alive head down, Mekatilili Wamenza, whom your people banished in Kisi and Kismayu, of the Bukusu resistance at Fort Chitambe, where thousands were killed, of the Nandi resistance under Koitalel Arap Somoe, who was tricked and killed by Colonel Richard Meinertshagen, of the resistance in Kisi, led by Otenyo Nyamantere, who was killed by a British firing squad, of Harry Thuku, who was banished in Kismayu, and of Muindim Bingu, who was jailed for seven years for speaking in Kikamba language to Sir Robert Brooke Profum, who was that time the governor of Kenya. The less we remind you of Mau Mau, the better, since it was the Mau Mau with their pangas that started the unraveling of the mighty British Empire. We should just mention, in passing, that during the state of emergency declared to fight Mau Mau, British colonial authorities killed 300,000 Gikuyu, Embu, Maru, and Kamba people, detained over two million people in Mount Kenya region in special concentration villages, and brought in a total of 12 battalions of the best soldiers from the British Army equipped with modern weapons and aircrafts to support the King's African Riffles, the East African Riffles, the Kenya Police, the Tribal Police, and the Home Guards to put down what colonial authorities disparagingly and disdainfully referred to as a rebellion by a mindless people. Yes, it is true that Britain and Kenya enjoy cordial relations, However, these bilateral relations could be strengthened further by certain acts of contrition on the part of the present leaders of Great Britain. It is impossible to enumerate the many things that you could say or do to make the situation better. As you drive around Nairobi in one of the Kenyan 14-seater buses emblazoned in typical Matatu graffiti, we remind you of a few important but lingering issues that give Kenyans sleepless nights. The first issue relates to the thousands of young men who were conscripted to fight for Britain during the First World War. 
Many of them went to a war that knew little about, but did not return. Given the meticulous manner in which the British keep their records, you could direct that the names of every African from this region who went to war be released, as well as details of their deaths and where their deaths occurred. Also, as a lover of the arts, we request you to intervene in the matter of the return of artifacts carted away from various Kenyan peoples and taken to Great Britain by an army of buccaneers, adventurists, anthropologists, anthologists, missionaries, administrators, and amateur collectors. Most of these artifacts are with the British Museum, in Cyprus, or in private collections. On the eve of Kenya's independence, important records of the colonial administration were either destroyed in a bonfire in downtown Nairobi or taken to the United Kingdom by the departing authorities. These records are an important resource for Kenyan history. Our humble request is that you cause the return of these records as their return would go a long way in filling important gaps in Kenyan history. Regarding the Mau Mau War, we would request your majesty to cause the release and return to Kenya of records of the counterinsurgency part of the war. Specifically, we request records of the 12 British battalions that came to Kenya to fight the Mau Mau, including their commanders, their orders, their campaign, and their unredacted battle records. These 12,000 elite soldiers were not here on a holiday or friendly visit like the one your majesty is currently engaged in. They came to fight, and there must be records of battles with the freedom fighters. The release of such records would be helpful in the writing of Mau Mau history, which is has throughout been skewed by too much propaganda. Finally, again on the issue of Mau Mau, there is the matter of unmarked graves and of Mau Mau mass graves. Most of the Mau Mau leaders who were killed had their lifeless bodies displayed to incredulous villagers for propaganda purposes. After such despicable displays, their bodies were driven off in land rovers and disposed off in unmarked graves. At the same time, many of the victims of the war were buried in unmarked mass graves. A decade or so ago, construction workers unknowingly unearthed an unmarked Mau Mau era mass grave while constructing a building in Kiambu town. To avoid such incidences, we ask that you effect the revealing of each location of the mass graves and the exact burial site of each Mau Mau leader, the likes of General Ruku, General Kuvu Kuvu, General Imbaria Kanyu, and Field Marshal Dedan Kimathi. Your Majesty, sir, taking responsibility for the acts of your ancestors does not mean you are personally responsible for the acts. No sane Kenyan thinks you are personally responsible for events that happened before you were born or were of age. Uh, this afternoon it'll be cold, wet and windy across most of Scotland. We're under the influence of uh, low pressure. Kenyans keenly follow your interests in the arts, climate change, environment conservation and heritage preservation. These interests, while often misunderstood in Britain, are similar to the concerns of our ancestors. Kenyans appreciate you as a person with a good heart, welling with bigger societal concerns. As the incumbent king of the people whose ancestors committed terrible acts, however, we are left with no choice but to ask for your token contrition and acceptance of responsibility on behalf of your forebears. Sounds right.